Here's a problem from the 2024 BMO2. We want to find all functions f from the integers to the integers such that for all integers n, two lots of f of f of n is 5f of n minus 2n. I'm going to dive into a solution here. Well, we might think about various things to do here. We could try and plug in some numbers n, which is a pretty standard way to do this. You could plug in n is 0 or n is 1 or what happens and it's n goes to infinity or, you know, just play about with this. And that is generally, you know, a well-accepted standard way to start you know, thinking about these sorts of problems. However, if we think about potential functions that could work, well, f has to be from the integers to the integers. So if it's going to be like an ordinary everyday function that we're used to seeing, it's not going to be trigonometric because that has too many decimals in. Uh, it's not going to involve e or exponents or, you know, maybe it might involve an integer to the power of something. But it seems as if potentially f might just be a simple, ordinary polynomial. Well, if it was, can we determine anything about what degree that polynomial would be? Well, firstly, could f be something like a quadratic? The answer is no, it couldn't be quadratic. Why not? Well, the thing is, if f was a quadratic function, f of n here would be something like you know, an squared plus bn plus c. But then if I do f of it again, I'd be doing a lots of that squared plus b lots of a n squared plus b n plus c plus c. And this is a monstrosity, but in particular, I've got n squared squared again. That's going to be degree 4. So the left-hand side here would have degree 4, but the right-hand side here would just be a quadratic minus a linear function, so still a quadratic. And so, therefore, it won't be the same for every single value of n. And for an exact same reason, it can't be a cubic or a quartic, or anything higher. So that means that if f was a polynomial, it has to be either a constant or a linear function. And it's also pretty clear it can't be constant, because if f was constant, the left-hand side would just be 2 times the constant c. The right-hand side would be 5c minus 2n. And this is clearly not going to be true for all values of n, because if you make n a million, uh, you know, 2c will not equal 5c minus a million or, you know, whatever. Um, so that means that if there's any hope of f being a polynomial here, it has to be a linear function. And it seems as if potentially f could be linear. So let's see if that could be the case. So let, or maybe I shouldn't say let, let's say try f of n equals a n plus b, where a and b are just some numbers here. And um, we're going to try and work out what they are. OK, so what does our left hand side become? Well, we've got two lots of f of f of n. So f of n is a n plus b. So f of f of n would be a lots of a n plus b plus b, which just uh, simplifies to a squared n plus a b plus b. Um, so the left hand side would be two lots of a squared n oops, uh, plus 2ab plus 2b. Uh, and we want that to equal 5a n plus 5b minus 2n. So just substituting everything into here. Okay, and reminding ourselves this needs to be true for every single value of n. Let's um, let's simplify this. So if I bring everything onto the left-hand side here, I'm going to get 2a squared minus 5a uh, minus 2, lots of n. So bringing all the n terms to the left. And then if I bring all the constant terms, that's going to be 2ab uh, minus 3b. And that all equals 0. Now, again, we're going to remind ourselves this has to be true for every single value of n. And this thing here is just a linear equation in n. It's something, you know, it can be written in this form, lambda n plus mu, if we just call that lambda and that mu. And we're saying that this has to be zero for every single possible value of n. So that makes it hopefully pretty clear that lambda and mu must be zero. Um, and if you're not convinced by that, let's let's firstly show that lambda must be zero. If lambda is not zero, then let's say know, lambda is five, then I could just make n, you know, a million, a billion, whatever, and eventually it will outweigh the mu, and it won't be able to be zero. You know, five times n plus mu will not be able to be zero. So that means that lambda certainly has to be zero, and once lambda is zero, you must get that mu is zero as well. So lambda and mu are both zero, and so from this we can then deduce that 2a squared minus 5a minus 2 equals zero, um, and now if we just solve this quadratic, you get a is 2 or a is a half. So a is either 2 or a is a half. 
and um, it's hopefully not too too difficult to see that well a cannot be a half because if a was a half our function would be f of n is you know a half n plus b but then it wouldn't be from the integers to the integers because if you plug in something like n is one this would be b plus a half and so it couldn't be an integer so that means a is not a half a must be two so we have that f of n is 2n plus some number b. Let's work out what b is by using this guy here. Well, we can just factor out the b. And we get b times 2a minus 3 is 0. Well, we now know a is 2, so we get 4 minus 3 in there. So that's going to be just b is 0. Very nice. So a is 2 and b must be 0. So if there's any chance of this working for a linear function, f of n has to be 2n plus zero, so just 2n. And if you want to, you can just plug this back into this and just verify that it does actually work, but it actually should work, even if we didn't plug it back in, because everything we've done here is kind of reversible. So all the steps we've done here, we can kind of go backwards on. Um, so it's not just a one-way implication, it's a two-way implication. Anyway, great, we found one function, f of n, that works. Now, from our earlier analysis, where we were looking at this equation here, and we kind of established, well, f of n couldn't be quadratic, it couldn't be constant, um, the only possibility was it's linear. From that analysis, we get the feeling that there can't be many more functions f of n that work here. And in fact, there aren't any more. In fact, there's, this is the only one, f of n equals 2n. So in order to prove that f of n equals 2n is the only solution to this equation here, we're going to be assuming there's another solution and actually showing that that solution must be 2n in disguise. So let's suppose f2n is some other solution. So f2n is another solution. Now, we're going to try and prove that f2n is 2n. And the way we're going to do that is by considering the difference. So d of n, I'm going to define to be equal to f of n minus f2n. So the difference between f of n and f2n. And so my goal here is to prove that d of n is the zero function, d of n. OK, how do I go about doing this? Well, if I rearrange this here, I get f2n is simply f of n minus d of n. And we know f of n is 2n. So this is just 2n minus d of n. Also, we're assuming that f2n here is the solution to this equation up here. So therefore, when I substitute uh, or replace f2n with 2n minus d n, this equation will remain true. So on the left hand side, I have 2 f2. And then this f2 of n is going to be 2n minus d of n, like so. And then I've got equals 5 uh, f2 of n, so 5 lots of 2n minus d n minus 2n. And then this right-hand side, if we imagine expanding this, 5 times 2n gives us 10n minus this 2n here is 8n. And then I've got minus 5 d n. Okay, dokie, let's clean up this or expand out this left-hand side further. So we've got another f2 here, so we're going to use this equation up here again. So this is going to be two lots of, now f2 of 2n minus dn. If we substitute that in here, that's going to be two lots of 2n minus dn. Uh, and then minus d of this number here. So minus d of 2n minus d of n. So it's getting a bit weird looking, but that's fine. And this equals 8n minus 5dn. Now, it looks a bit crazy here, but actually this simplifies really nicely. Um, we've got 2 times 2 times 2n, that's 8n, that's going to cancel nicely with that 8n. Then I've got 2 times 2 times minus dn, that's going to be minus 4dn, in fact I'll write it over here, minus 4d of n. Um, and I've then got minus 2 lots of this thing here, so minus 2 lots of d. And now this thing here is 2n minus dn, it turns out I actually don't really care about that. I'm just going to call it xn, so xn here is just this number. So I get minus 4d of n minus 2dxn equals minus 5dn. And then just cleaning this up gives me that dn equals two, uh, two lots of d of xn. Pause! I've decided to set up my own tutoring company to help you study maths at a top university. So if you like the way I explain things, go check it out. Let's get on with the video. So d of n equals two lots of d of xn. Why does this mean that d must be the zero function? Well, remember this equation here is true for any integer n. So you can choose your favorite integer n, doesn't matter. This equation will be true. So let's ch choose 6 for no particular reason. So if I look at d6, according to this equation here, d6 will be 2 lots of d of x6. Great. But now I can rinse and repeat this equation here, but replacing n with x6. 
So this is going to be two lots of two lots of d of x and then whatever x6 is, like so. And two times two, of course, is just four. So this is four d x x6. Great. And we can repeat this to get that this is eight lots of d of x x x6 and keep going and going and going. Now, since this function, this function d is f, you know, two f's subtracted from each other, and f is from the integers to the integers, that means because when you subtract two integers, you also get an integer, we know that d of any number must be an integer. So we can repeat this process here and get that d of 6 is some power of 2 times an integer. But this works for every single power of 2. And so therefore, d of 6 must be a multiple of 2, a multiple of 4, a multiple of 8, a multiple of 16, a multiple of 32, and so on. And that works for any power of 2 you choose. Which number is a power of 2 or a multiple of a power of 2 for any power of 2? The only number is 0. And so from this, we'd be able to conclude that d6 must be 0. And you can apply the exact same argument to any number you want. Hence, d is the zero function. Hence, f of n must be equal to f2n. Hence, the only solution is f of n equals 2n.